Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah bless you all. Okay, uh, let's resume with our tafsir al Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده ترضيه وجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم so الحمد لله رب العالمين we were last looking at the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the angels paid him a visit on their way to meet out the punishment that uh, the people of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam had brought upon themselves. So Sayyidina Ibrahim initially, you know, he served them the food and he was uh, he was wondering, you know, he was afraid like why are they not eating my food and then they said that we're angels and uh, and so they mentioned that they've come to give good news and we said that they were given the good news of Sayyidina Ishaq and Sayyidina Ya'qub after him. Which incidentally is actually one of the strongest proofs of uh, uh, the issue of the uh, of the the, the bih, which son of uh, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam uh, was almost slaughtered. It was it Ismail or Ishaq alayhi salatu wasalam. And the majority of the Muslim scholars have said Ismail. And some have uh, said Ishaq, and I believe uh, the Jews say it was Isaac, naturally, <laughs> because of their lineage. Um, but no, it was uh, Ismail, and it, it actually makes the most sense. Um, th there's discussions, we'll, we'll look at them in, in other surahs, like in Surah uh, uh, As-Safat, uh, inshaAllah ta'ala. But here at this point, um, so he's given... So Sarah is actually giving good news that she's going to have a child, and it's good news because she's you know she's old and you know she thought she was barren and um, which she'll she'll mention, uh, and then so she, they they tell her you're going to have a child, and then beyond that child, another child. So you're going to have Ishaq, and then after him uh, Yaqub is is going to be his son Yaqub. It makes no sense in saying you're going to have a child, and then your husband's ch child from Hajar, he will have a, a son called Yaqub. It doesn't make any sense for them. You know, rather, when you're giving good news to someone, you give what's directly benefiting them. So, you know, uh, that's a very, very strong indication. Anyway, you know, strong proof. So then, let's continue. So, قالت يا ويلتا يا ويلتا أألد وأنا عجوز وهذا بعلي شيخا إن هذا لشيء عجيب. She wondered, oh my, how can I have a child in this old age, and my husband here is an old man. It's truly an astonishing thing. So uh, she's expressing her shock, and it, it, it is that. So this word ya wailata. Wail is the strongest word in the Arabic language when it comes to something negative or harm befalling someone. It can mean destruction, it can mean death. You say wailak to someone when you, you know, intending for them to, you know, die. And so, but she uses it for herself, which clearly it, it, we understand that it's not meant to be used literally. Like uh, in the Middle East, like for example, in, in Jordan, they'll use the term yukhra <laughs> baitak, may your house be ruined. Right, yeah, they hold family and everything, but they don't mean it literally. So it's never taken as an insult. Like uh, the Jahili poet um, Zuhair ibn Abi Sulma, he uses the term "la abalak." Saimtu takalif al hayati la abalak. Saimtu takalif al hayati wa man yaish la abalak. Thamani nahaulan yasami. He said, "I become fed up with the burdens of life, and whoever lives." Uh, may you not have a father <laughs> at that point if 80 years gets fed up so this point may you not have a father it's not literally meant it's like to get your attention to really get you to focus on what's after and so um, she says Yahweh later not meaning it literally like oh my god what what a shock what a shock this is uh, and she says wa ana ajuzun. am I going to give birth when 
I'm an ajuz, ajuz from ajaza to be uh, incapable of something. And you know, as you know, as people get older, their their physical capabilities diminish. For someone who's very old, you know, they struggle walking about. For example, they struggle with many things. So the term is used, ajuz is used for them, and the pattern could apply to a male or a female, but it's mostly used for females, right? Old ladies. So she said, am I going to give birth when I'm an ajuz, a really old uh, woman? وَهَذَا بَعْلِي And this husband of mine pointing right uh, at him uh, to, uh, you know, to um, indicate his his old age. Right? وَهَذَا بَعْلِي شَيْخًا uh, and Although Sayyidina Ibrahim has had a child, you know, there, there, there must be at least what, 10 or 12, 12 years or so between uh, Ismail and Ishaq or something to that effect. So over a decade, but then, um, I mean, she could have thought, okay, well, maybe that was because, uh, you know, uh, she was young, uh, Hajir was young. So, you know, it's it's much more, it's, it's common or it's, it's likely, it's possible for an older man to have a child with a younger lady. But then, you know, for an older man to have a child with an old, older lady, it's not as common, right? especially, you know, if she thought, you know, I, I'm past that age, that, you know, I cannot, right? Well, how the ba'li, a ba'li is an old word for, for husband. It means someone who you know, takes care of matters. So he takes care of the wife, provides for her, these sorts of things. Well, ba'li, shaykhan. And a shaykh is a very old person, right? a very old man. You know, the, the wisdom of his years shows on his uh, grey hairs, these sorts of things. So his Wahada Ba'li Shaykhan. So she's saying, How on earth could this be? And in Hada, indeed, nominal sentence with in really affirming her complete shock. And indeed, Hada La Shay'un is something, it's just something like, you know, is indefinite because it's out of the ordinary. Ajeebun, wondrous, astonishing, shocking, right? Indefinite once again on the pattern of Fa'il to her really highlight it. Ajeebun in Hada La Shay'un, Ajeebun. And I mean, you can understand why she'd uh, feel like that. But on the same side, she's a wife of a prophet and someone of a high level of righteousness herself. And, you know, she shouldn't really be shocked that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can honor them at this age with this. So uh, that's what the angels then say. قَالُوا أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ رَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ إِنَّهُ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ Subhanallah. They responded, are you astonished by Allah's decree? May Allah's mercy and blessings be upon you, O people of this house. Indeed, He is praiseworthy, all glorious. Interesting. So, قَالُوا أَتَعْجَبِينَ مِنْ أَمْرِ are you, are you shocked? Are you astonished? By Allah's command, by, by Allah's matter, like what Allah's decided to do here, meaning His decree that He's going to give her uh, a child, um, in old age, at an age where ladies usually cannot have children at all. And in all these years of marriage, and she's not had a child. And so Allah, so which shows the, really the, the beauty of the relationship that they had. And, uh, you know, Sayyidina Ibrahim stayed with her all of these years. And uh, it's really just beautiful prophetic akhlaq being shown there. And uh, so um, Allah, is, she's clearly going to be shocked so but the angels are saying ata'jabina min are you are you are you astonished by allah's command Ahl, you know, why because she's the wife of a prophet and prophets regularly show miracles and she's clearly a son of righteousness herself so she must have seen some of the, something like this in her own state and her own you know her own relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but usually you know people um, sometimes when these spectacular events happen, people always think of them as something that will happen to others and not them. And when it does come and you know happen to them, it, it doesn't hit home initially, especially in the initial moment. You can't believe it. Like me, this is happening to me. So she's feeling like re really shocked at this. So then the angel say, Rahmatullahi alaykum. Uh, the mercy and kindness and favor and, and the generosity of Allah and His barakat, the vast goodness 
the, the Allah has may that be upon you, may it come upon you. Ahl al bayti or household, so or literally means the people of the house. So you can refer to the Sayyidina Ibrahim and his wife. Um, and Abu Saud says yes, it's also applying to Sayyidina Ibrahim, but primarily his wife because Sayyidina Ibrahim may have felt uh, some of this shock as well. So. Uh, so the angels are saying, look, you know, you're from a, a prophetic household. How can you feel shocked about this? So, rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu alaykum ahl al-bayt. And then a reason, you know, so this, you know, it, it's a dua. It's also, you know, a, a reminder that don't be shocked. Don't be shocked. Yes, um, you may not think um, it's possible to have a child at this age, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one can, can, can do it. And you know he's showing that the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are tremendous and there's no limit. There's no limit. He gives what he wants whenever he wants, however he wants, and he's tremendous. Which is why we see the reasoning here, Innahu Hamidun Majid. So the pattern Hamid is so nominal sentence with this these names, Innahu Hamidun Majid. Uh highly emphasized this is reality, this is how things are, the rule, this is what it is like. Innahu Hamidun from Hamida to praise. We hear Hamidun Fa'ilun. Um, it has a passive form here. So he either you can say he is praised, or as others have put it, who are mustahiqun li jami'il Muhammad. Or he's deserving of all praise. So he is praised because human beings praise him, the angels praise him. Allah has praised himself because he's deserving of it. And and then there's um, the uh, the, so, so that's, that's the praise element Or you can look at it as potentially like He deserves praise because he does this And he does so many things for every one of his cre uh, In his creation And uh, so um, So both meanings can apply here So he's already praised And he's deserving of praise Which is a, a hint to her Praise Allah, keep praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For this blessing, this gift And then really understand the worth of it Because it's come from his vast generosity His done something that usually never happens to, for, for people. So that's why he used the, the name Majid. And sometimes people translate the, 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 the word Majid as glorious or, or something like that. But uh, it's, I mean, it's true meaning is closer to vast generosity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uses it for, you know, the Quran, well, Quran al Majid in Surah Qaf, because of the, the vast amount of guidance and benefits for this life and the next that the Quran gives. So it comes from a root word where, like, a camel walks into a pasture and there's lots of pasture, it walks into a place where there's lots of pasture for it to eat. So, you know, uh, that's what the root word, the etymology of it is connected with. So we could say Majid means supremely generous, right? So he's su supremely deserving of praise or supremely praised and supremely generous. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is interesting because, uh, we, you know, uh, we use this as part of our supplication, our prayers all the time. Inna ka hamidun majid. And then, you know, which is what that prayer is because you ask for the mercy and the, the blessings of God. The kindness and the blessings of God on to be on Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his family, just like he appeared on Sayyidina Ibrahim and his family. Look at all the many, many generations of prophets and awliya and scholars and righteous people that came from Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, through Sayyidina Ishaq and through Sayyidina Ismail. So yeah. So then he says, "Falamma dhahaba an Ibrahim al then after the fear had left Ibrahim, the initial fear, <clears throat> and the good news had reached him, he began to plead with us for the people of Lut. Right. So, فَلَمَا ذَهَبَ عَنْ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الرَّوْعُ So, as soon as, so when the row uh, went, so, so, it seems like Sayyidina Ibrahim would have been, the angels came to tell him about the punishment because they weren't, geographically, they weren't very far, maybe a few miles away. And so that's one element. Secondly, um, the angels came to give him the good news, but the good news was also going to make this, the news of this punishment of the people of Lut lighter and easier. So that was given first. And now that topic's been discussed and then that fear is now gone and they're feeling at ease. 
and then that he's told uh, and this is this is mentioned in, in multiple surahs uh, like surah al-dhariyat and others so he's told that the people of lut alayhi salatu wasalam a punishment has been decreed on them so he starts uh, debating with the angels um you know no give them more time or give them a chance to loot amongst them he must have mentioned and like we see in surah al-ankabut is also mentioned so uh, the angels say we know loot is amongst them and that they're going to save him and it's the others that are going to get punished so sayna ibrahim uh, yujadiluna the present tense he's he's he argues or he, he debates with us so he is pleading is is asking for Uh, more of an opportunity for them people and for them to not get destroyed um fi qaumi lut regarding qaumi lut so but he's actually having this discussion with the angels but because the angels came with the command of allah and through the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then uh, the you know it's as though he's speaking directly to allah azza wa jal so then uh, he says the reason why he's like this he did this in ibrahim la halim awahun munib beautiful traits look at this truly abraham was forbearing tender hearted and ever turning to his lord so allah nominal sentences with him in uh, so it gives the reason why the previous thing happened but also a strong reason and strong praise for ibrahim in ibrahim which some say actually the root word of this name indicates ab and rahim so close to like being uh, the word meaning a merciful fa- merciful father so with the in the em- emphasis of the islam as well la halimun so halim from hilm from hilm a person is in control of their anger and they don't get angry <coughs> quickly so therefore <clears throat> someone who harms them they don't retaliate and they don't want them to be punished or hurt or harmed or destroyed you know immediately right um they're not someone who responds and just reacts so they can remain calm and respond appropriately la <laughs> halim then there's the word awah which they say is from the word ah you know um <coughs> like in english when someone hurts themselves they say ow or ouch so this term ah is used in arabic to express deep emotional pain or longing and or like when you feel for someone else's suffering you say ah oh, in something like that so awah is a pattern where you know someone does it over and over and over and over again like it's a profession right like haddad is a professional uh person who de- deals with iron so uh, allah he again and again and again he cl- cries out, out of compassion and uh empathy and sympathy for people and so very soft hearted uh, in the ibrahim uh, the halimun so he's not quick to uh, have the ask for them to be punished or to punish anyone who harms him uh awahun very emotional tender hearted feeling his emotions and feeling empathy for others munib and he turns back to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly so maybe he thought well if they turn back to allah if they given a chance they'll make tauba as well because that's what said ibrahim does munib so he turns back fully to allah azawajal again and again and again that's one aspect and then there's also like it's a deeper is deeper than tauba and the motive is deeper the motive is love and other things there there's a lot of difference over the specifics of it but this is what it's coming down to and so sayna ibrahim didn't want them to be punished in, in this way so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us why he acted this way and then he says ya ibrahim a'rid an hada the angel said oh ibrahim plead no more literally turn away from this that you know this there's no point in you in you doing this uh innahu qad jaa amru rabbik wa innahum atihim adhabun ghayru mardud and your lord's decree has already come and they will certainly be afflicted with a punishment that cannot be averted it's very similar to yusuf a'rid an hada so here ya ibrahim a'rid an hada so ya this is interesting that the ya is used to call someone who's far away and so it says oh his mind is with those people and how, what the suffering uh, is going to be like for the, in the punishment and what if something happens to, to sayna lut alayhi salatu wassalam 
And so Sayyidina Ibrahim is thinking about this. But the angels say, Ya Ibrahim. And Ya is used for someone who's far away. Or in this context, someone whose mind is far off. And you want to bring them and get them to focus on a particular point. Like the same thing in Sahih al-Bukhari. When Sayyidina Abu Bakr um, he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إلى, إلى When he was in the, the cave of um, uh, Thawr uh, after the Hijrah, because the, him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when they went to, when they left Mecca, they went south, uh, southwest first, and they waited in the cave, and then they went north through another longer route. So Sayyidina uh, Ibra, uh, uh, Abu Bakr was worried and that um, if, if one of them looks at his feet, he'll see us. So he's worried. He said that to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Messenger of Allah said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma dhannuka ya Abu Bakr? What are your thoughts, O oh, Abu Bakr? Like, bring your attention back here. Bithnaini, Allahu thalithuhuma. That, um, what, what are your thoughts about two people for whom Allah is their third? And like, you think is anything going to happen to them? You think anyone's going to get past them and, and harm them? No, absolutely not. So then he says, Innahu um, qajaa is tremendous amru rabbik. The angel said, Indeed, truly, the command of your Lord, the supreme command and threat and punishment of your Lord, has really come. Wa innahum atihim, and indeed them they. You know, indeed, them coming to them, you could almost say, atihim from ata for something to come quickly. So in the home, so nominal sentence with in uh, really emphasizing the the truth of this promise. But then atihim to, to them is coming, hmm. and atihim instead of saying yatihim it will come, is presented as an ism fa'il to uh, to indicate it's certainly coming. Nothing going to change it. Adabun ghayru mardud, an adab which cannot, which is not, never going to be uh, repelled. So radda to repel, push something back. Ghayr, uh, as I said, talks about the absolute opposite of something. So mardud, something repelled, deflected, sent away. No, it's the exact opposite. Ghayru mardud is the totally opposite. So it's the opposite of being averted and repelled and you know, sent away. This punishment is coming to them and there's nothing they can do about it. That's what the angel said. So then he ends, uh, he says, وَلَمَّا جَاءَتْ رُسُولُنَا لُوطًا سِيئَ بِهِمْ وَضَاقَ بِهِمْ ذَرْعًا وَقَالَ هَذَا يَوْمٌ عَصِيبٌ And when our messenger angels came to Lot, he was distressed and worried by their arrival. And he said, this is a terrible day. Just look at this. So when our messengers, meaning the angels, they left in Ibrahim and then they went to uh, Sodom. Uh, it, was, it was a group of uh, cities, Wal Mu'tafikat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them as Wal Mu'tafikat. Um, those cities flipped over, basically. Right? So uh, they went to those cities and you know, they went to Sayyidina Lut, alayhi salatu wasalam, in the form of young handsome men and as you know the you know the um, the people of lut alayhi salatu wasalam were practicing sodomy and this is something the quran forbids is forbidden in you know it's forbidden for them in the time of uh, abraham and so it's it's forbidden i mean as far as i know in in, in the abrahamic faiths although i think G christianity and judaism may have uh, amended things may have changed things but Islam retains the, the true teachings that God sent so you know, it's, it's forbidden the act itself uh, is forbidden and there's you know there's wisdom our maker knows us better than what we know ourselves and how many times someone has you know in the moment you know out of desire or ever done something and then later realized no this wasn't good for me or someone just um, you know ultimately people make their own choices and uh um, you know, the Messenger of Allah said that all prophets have said, "Ida lam tastahi fasna ma shi'ta." That if you feel, if you feel no shame, then do what you want. Meaning that do what you want, you're gonna have to face a judgment for it. So you know, that's basically it. So, uh, so when the angels, uh, so they they went in the form of handsome boys, and these people had this 
perversion and you know <clears throat> they Allah you know uh, and so uh, what happened is the, the people were uh, you know when they were told by Lut's wife which we'll see next time they they had all these lustful impulses and we're gonna go and you know uh, violate you know these young men and so Sayyidina Lut knew that so these people came as guests and guests were seen as something sacred in the in the pre-modern world you, you see in Greek literature as well uh, Othello you know these sorts of not Othello um, uh, the Odyssey Odysseus when he went back home you know the Greeks had a particular understanding of hospitality so what happens so he felt upset see when you feel really upset and oh no this you've come here why not because he dislikes having guests but because guests here are a liability to themselves because of how vile you know the townsmen were and what they would do to you know young vulnerable men so he's upset see him him and he felt unable to do anything so so there are there's many ways of understanding this but uh, Abu Saud mentions that that is a tamthil is it's a way of expressing something so there are from your zira your your forearm to the end of your hand so how long is that you know it's its length determines how far you can reach along with the rest of your arm but it's it's one i mean you normally grab with your hand which is connected to your your your, your forearm so it's as though his reach um diminished so daqa bihim daran because of them um his uh forearm shortened so if the forearm shortens then your reach is is shorter uh, so it is it's it's as though he's basically saying that um he felt like he was uh, unable to defend them so just like someone who's previously able to reach further but now they can't they feel frustrated and because they can't they don't have that same capacity anymore so Sayyidina Lut alayhi salatu wasalam out of care and compassion and concern for his uh, guests he felt like this um, and he said this is a very difficult day an intensely difficult day and uh, yeah subhanallah so so that came so the first the feeling and then so first feeling upset that they're here and then the feeling of he's not going to be able to defend them and then finally his recognition that this is, this is going to be a, a testing trying and difficult day so we look at it from here inshallah ta'ala Allah bless you all وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين بارك الله فيكم